Hey everyone, Linus here. Today we're diving into the world of hacking, specifically how hackers can use something as innocent as an image to gain access to your Android device. Don't worry though, we're going through this for educational purposes only. Knowledge is power and understanding how these attacks work is the first step to protecting yourself. Now you might be thinking, how can an image possibly be dangerous? That's a great question. It all boils down to something called steganography a sneaky technique that lets hackers hide malicious code within seemingly harmless files like images. Think of it like a digital Trojan horse. It looks innocent on the outside, but inside lies a hidden danger. The goal here isn't to scare you, but to educate you. By the end of this guide, you'll have a better understanding of how these attacks work and more importantly, how to protect yourself. So, let's get started. Steganography is like a digital version of invisible ink. It's the art of hiding information within other information so it's practically invisible to the naked eye. In our case, we're talking about hiding malicious code within an image file. The image will look, feel, and act like a regular image, but hidden beneath the pixels lies our secret code. Imagine you have a beautiful picture of a sunset. A hacker could use steganography to embed a malicious payload within that image. To you and me, it's just a pretty picture, but to an Android device, that hidden code could be anything from stealing your personal data to taking complete control of your phone. There are many tools available to perform steganography, but we'll be focusing on a couple of popular ones, Metasploit for creating our payload and Steghide for embedding it into an image. Don't worry if these sound intimidating. I'll walk you through each step of the process. The key takeaway here is that things aren't always what they seem in the digital world. Just because something looks harmless doesn't mean it is. But don't stress, because knowledge is power, and we're just getting started. All right, let's gather our tools. To perform this hack, we'll need a few things. First, a virtual machine. This is like a computer within your computer and provides a safe environment to practice hacking without risking your actual system. We recommend Kaylee Linux, a popular choice among security professionals. Second, Metasploit. This is our weapon of choice. Metasploit is a powerful framework that allows us to create and deploy various exploits, including the one we'll use to target the Android device. Third, Steggy, this handy tool allows us to embed our malicious payload within an innocent looking image file. And finally, an Android emulator or a real Android device will need a guinea pig to test our hack on. Using an emulator is safer, but testing on a real device, your own of course, gives you a more realistic understanding. Think of these tools like our digital lockpicks and crowbars. We're not using them for anything illegal, of course. We're ethical hackers, remember? But understanding how these tools work is crucial to understanding how real attackers operate. Once you have everything set up, it's time to build our payload. Let's move on to the next section. Our payload is the actual piece of code that will run on the target Android device. It's the surprise inside our Trojan horse. For this demonstration, we'll create a simple payload that opens a reverse shell. Now, a reverse shell might sound complicated, but it's a pretty straightforward concept. Imagine it as a secret backdoor into the target device. Once our payload is executed, it'll send a signal back to our computer, establishing a connection. Then, we can send commands through this connection and control the device remotely. We'll use Metasploit's tool to generate this payload. Don't worry about memorizing the exact commands yet. The important thing is to understand the concept. We're essentially crafting a small program that, when executed on the Android device, will give us control. Once our payload is ready, we'll save it as an APK file. This is the standard file format for Android apps. In the next section, we'll learn how to hide this APK file within an image using Steguide. Section 5, Injecting the Payload, Hiding Our Code in an Image. Now comes the fun part, hiding our malicious APK file within an innocent-looking image. This is where steganography comes into play. We'll use Steguide, our trusty steganography tool, to embed our payload within the image. The process is surprisingly simple. We'll use Steguide's command, specify the image we want to use as a cover, select our malicious APK file, and set a passphrase for security. That's it. Steguide will then work its magic, embedding the APK file within the image's data without visibly altering the picture itself. To the untrained eye, the modified image will look completely identical to the original. 
but hidden within those pixels lies our malicious APK file waiting to be executed. This is a crucial step in the attack process. By hiding our payload within an image, we can bypass many security measures and deliver our malicious code directly to the target device. Section 6. Delivering the Payload Getting our image to the target with our payload safely hidden within an image, it's time to deliver it to the target Android device. There are several ways to do this, each with its own pros and cons. First, this involves tricking the user into opening the image themselves. We could send a phishing email with the image attached, share it through a messaging app, or even disguise it as a download link on a fake website. Second, hackers often inject malicious code into legitimate websites. This code can automatically download and open the image on a visitor's device without their knowledge. Third, if the attacker is physically close to the target, they could potentially send the image via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi Direct. The delivery method depends on the attacker's goals and resources. Social engineering attacks are common, but they rely on the user falling for the bait. Compromised websites offer a more stealthy approach, while Bluetooth and Wi-Fi sharing require physical proximity. Regardless of the method used, the goal is the same, to get the user to open the image on their Android device. Once they do that, our trap is sprung. Section 7. Setting the Trap. Listening for the Connection. While our malicious image makes its way to the target, we need to set up a listener on our end. Remember the reverse shell we created earlier? This listener will act as the other end of that connection, allowing us to receive the incoming signal from the compromised device. We'll use Metasploit again for this task. We'll configure a listener within Metasploit, specifying the type of payload we used and the port it will be listening on. Think of it like setting up a special phone line that only our payload knows how to call. Once our listener is running, it'll patiently wait for that incoming connection. As soon as the user opens our malicious image on their Android device, the payload will execute, trigger the reverse shell, and our listener will spring into action. This is a critical moment in the attack. If everything goes according to plan, we'll soon have complete control over the target device. Section 8. Access granted. What to do after a successful hack. Boom! Our listener has received a connection. This means our payload successfully executed on the target Android device and we now have a reverse shell giving us remote access. But with great power comes great responsibility, right? Since we're ethical hackers, we won't be causing any harm. However, a real attacker could use this access to steal sensitive data, install more malware, spy on the user, or even lock the device and demand a ransom. It's important to understand the potential consequences of such an attack. Our personal devices contain a wealth of private information, and falling victim to a hack like this can have serious repercussions. But remember, we're learning about this to protect ourselves and others. By understanding how these attacks work, we can take steps to mitigate the risks and stay safe in the digital world. Section 9. Covering your tracks, the importance of cleaning up. Let's say we're done with our ethical hacking exercise. We've successfully tested the vulnerability, learned how the attack works, and now it's time to clean up our tracks. A responsible hacker always ensures they leave no trace of their presence on the target system. This includes removing any files we uploaded, deleting logs that might contain evidence of our activity, and closing the reverse shell connection securely. Think of it like breaking into your own house to test its security. You wouldn't want to leave the door wide open for anyone to enter, right? Similarly, we need to secure the compromised device and restore it to its original state. This step is crucial for two reasons. One, ethical considerations. As ethical hackers, we have a responsibility to minimize any potential impact on the target system. Two, self-preservation. Leaving traces behind can lead back to us, which could have legal consequences, especially if we're not authorized to access the system in the first place. Remember, Ethical hacking is about responsible disclosure and helping make systems more secure, not about causing harm or leaving a mess behind. Section 10. The Law and You Ethical Considerations for Ethical Hackers Before we wrap things up, let's talk about the legal and ethical boundaries of hacking. While learning about hacking techniques is fascinating and crucial for cybersecurity professionals, it's important to remember that unauthorized access to computer systems is a crime in most countries. 
Ethical hacking, also known as penetration testing, is legal only when performed with the explicit permission of the system owner. This means you can't just go around hacking into random devices or networks, even if it's just for practice. Here are some key ethical considerations to keep in mind. Always obtain written permission. Before conducting any penetration testing, ensure you have written consent from the system owner outlining the scope of your activities. Respect privacy and confidentiality. Treat any data you encounter during testing with the utmost confidentiality. Do not access, copy, or disclose any information without explicit authorization. Disclose vulnerabilities responsibly. If you discover any security flaws, report them to the system owner promptly and provide detailed information on how to remediate the issue. Remember, ethical hacking is about making the digital world a safer place. Always operate within the bounds of the law and with the highest ethical standards. Section 11. Staying safe. Protecting yourself from image-based attacks. Now that you know how hackers can use images to target Android devices, let's discuss some ways to protect yourself from these sneaky attacks. 1. Be wary of suspicious images. Don't open images from unknown or untrusted sources. This includes email attachments, links sent via messaging apps, and downloads from suspicious websites. 2. Keep your software updated. Software updates often include security patches that fix known vulnerabilities. Make sure your Android device and all its apps are up to date. 3. Install a reputable antivirus app. A good antivirus app can detect and block many types of malware, including those hidden within images. 4. Enable Google Play Protect. This built-in security feature scans apps for harmful behavior even before you install them. Make sure it's turned on in your device settings. By following these simple tips, you can significantly reduce your risk of falling victim to image-based attacks. Remember, staying safe online requires a combination of awareness, caution, and keeping your devices and software up to date. Section 12. Conclusion. Hack responsibly, my friends. Well, there you have it. We've journeyed through the fascinating and slightly scary world of hacking Android devices using images. Remember, our goal here was purely educational. Understanding how these attacks work is the first step towards protecting ourselves and our digital lives. We explored the art of steganography, learned how to create and embed malicious payloads, and even set up our own listener to catch that reverse shell connection. But most importantly, we emphasize the ethical implications of these techniques and the importance of responsible disclosure. As technology continues to evolve, so too will the methods used by malicious actors. Staying ahead of the curve requires continuous learning, awareness, and a healthy dose of skepticism. Remember, knowledge is power, but with great power comes great responsibility. Use your newfound knowledge wisely, ethically, and help make the digital world a safer place for everyone. Until next time, stay curious, stay safe, and keep those firewalls high.